What's up everybody, Brian here. Welcome down to the Gecko Lab. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a fruit smoothie treat for your geckos. So before we get into talking about how you can make your geckos a fruit treat, we need to talk about the when and the why. So the answer to the why, why would you feed your gecko a fruit treat? The only legitimate answer for that is because it makes you feel good. And I know this is gonna fill the comment section up with all those people that just think their gecko is their best friend and has this eternal soul to soul bond with them, which I always get a lot of hate mail for when I say this, but your geckos don't like you, they don't bond with you, and they don't appreciate or love you more if you give them a treat food. They just don't operate like that. Yes, they will enjoy it because it's a very sweet food, and just like every other animal on earth, they know that sweeter things generally mean higher calories and higher caloric intake equals higher survival rates. That's why food tastes sweet to us. So, the why you would feed your gecko a treat, it's really just something to make you feel good. Uh, it's something people like to do, and I understand that. I feel like that too. I care about my geckos, and it makes me feel good to be like, oh, I'm giving them a treat. I also know the geckos don't care. It doesn't enhance their lives in some way. They don't look forward to it. They're not happy because of it. These, these are human emotions. The geckos don't feel it, but it's a fun thing to do. A lot of people do it, and I recognize that. I feel it, so we're going to go through that today. The win we need to talk about. So there's a lot of information online. If you look up crested gecko safe fruits, you'll get a whole list of fruits, what's safe, what's not safe, and it'll break down the calcium to vitamin ratios and all these different things and tell you which ones are safest for your geckos based on which ratios are better suited to what they need to survive. I would not listen to any of that. The way that I see this is it's all hogwash. Don't listen to it. My, my theory is if you're feeding a fruit treat to your gecko so often that you need to be worried about these calcium vitamin ratios, you're feeding a fruit treat way too often. It's like if you ate a pixie stick. If you eat pixie sticks, just nothing but five pixie sticks for dinner one night, it's not gonna affect you. It's not gonna mess up your body. Having, you know, the, not getting the proper vitamins in your dinner that night, it, it doesn't matter. If you try to eat pixie sticks and nothing but pixie sticks for a week or a month, you're, you're gonna have some problems, obviously. Same thing with fruit treat to geckos. It's not super healthy for them. It's clearly not a complete diet. Feeding it to them one time a month is my rule, no more than once a month. One feeding a month and the rest of their feedings are balanced, healthy diets, it's not going to affect them. So don't listen to any of this, what are the vitamin, calcium, phosphorus ratios, all this stuff you'll see on forums and stuff. Don't listen to any of it. Just make sure your fruits are crusty safe, which basically just means no citrus. Don't feed them high citrus fruits. Other than that, you're good to go. And that's, uh, yeah, I think that about covers it for that. Let's get into, so here I've got three different groups of fruits that I, I like to blend together to make fruit smoothie treats. I'm gonna show you guys how I do that, what I put in, and then show you how I store it and use it because trying to make a, a, a fruit smoothie this big if you've ever tried, if you have like one or two geckos, it doesn't work very well. So I'm gonna give you some tips on that as well. Let's get right into it. So we're gonna make three different fruit smoothie blend treats for the geckos today. Let me show you guys the three different blends of fruit that I use. I always put a banana in as my base, no matter what the mixture is. One mixture I do is bananas, pears, and mangoes. Another mixture I do is bananas, grapes, and raspberries. And the last mixture that I will do is bananas, blueberries, and strawberries. So we're gonna make up one of the three, all three of these, one batch of all three of these real quick for you guys, show you how I mix them, feed them, store them, everything that goes along with it. Let's get right into it. So I've got all my supplies laid out here, cutting board, knife, uh, water to mix in with it. I use a Ninja fruit blender. You can get a small blender like this. I've showed them in my how to make gecko food video to use to mix up your gecko food. You can get a cheaper version at like Walmart or Target or something for about 20 bucks. So they're real easy and cheap to have on hand. And then they just come with these nice little blender bottles to mix it up in. So let's go ahead and make the first one here. The first thing I always do is add my banana in. I always like to start with a base for a banana 
And then this one's gonna have pear and mango. So I'm just gonna slice up some of this pear. Now, sometimes you can, a lot of people prefer to peel the skin off of the pear, especially if you don't have a great blender because the, uh, the skin can not blend very well and kind of just have big chunks of pear or mango skin in there. I don't think it's too big of a deal. Uh, it certainly doesn't bother the geckos if they don't like it. They just eat around it and it ends up not affecting them very much. All right, so I got some pieces of pear. Let's go ahead and throw those in here. Now I'm gonna slice off a bit of this mango. Make sure you take the stickers off your fruit first so your geckos aren't eating stickers. But fun fact, the stickers that come on your fruit are safe for consumption. That's one of our FDA regulations here in America is any, any sticker that's attached to a food item has to be safe for human consumption. So if you ever do forget to take that sticker off, not a big deal. It won't hurt your geckos if you blend it up and feed it to them. Just like it won't hurt you if you accidentally take a bite of an apple or a pear or a mango and it has a piece of sticker stuck to it. Uh, another thing I was gonna tell you guys, um, so this is a treat food. It's really, it's not very scientific. I don't do any like measuring on how much mango versus banana do I wanna put in here. I don't, you know, even with the vitamin powder that we're gonna add in a minute, I don't really measure it out. Again, this is a treat food, so I'm not too worried about the nutritional value on it because it's just a treat. Your gecko shouldn't be eating that much of it to begin with if they are your problem's not how healthy is your treat food. Your problem is how much treats are you giving your geckos? So I got my fruit chopped up in my blender bottle here. Uh, the next thing I'll do is add a little bit of water. I kind of do this again because it's not scientific and I don't know exactly how much uh, water I'm gonna need. I didn't measure out my fruit. I just play it by ear and then add more water as we need when we blend it. The next thing I do is add a bit of honey. I try and do about one tablespoonful of honey I just kind of eyeball it and the honey just adds you know it's it's very healthy it's good for the geckos and it adds sweetness this is a treat food after all so they like it and the last thing I add is our Rapashi calcium plus so this is the same calcium powder calcium vitamin powder that I dust our crickets and insects with I like to add I got a quarter teaspoon here not very much just a little dash of this in here Again, this is not very scientific. I don't have some, like I've got a degree in food management for animals or biology or any of this. I just like to add it in because it does add some extra calcium and some vitamins for the animals, makes it a little bit healthier, makes me feel better about it. I, again, not scientific. I just prefer to add it in to the gecko's diet. That's, that's it. You just chop the fruit up, put it in here with some water. I'll probably need to add more water, but let's blend this up and see how it looks. That is actually not bad at all. Look at that, perfect. It's similar consistency to the gecko food when you mix it up. A little thicker than water, almost like ketchup. Perfect, that one is going to be our mango and pear. Let's do another one. I'm going to reuse my blender top here because I've only got one of them. Next one, I like to do banana, strawberry, and grape. Again, I always use one whole banana. In that last one, I did about half a pear and half a mango. In this one, I will do one banana, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight grapes, and eight strawberries. Six, seven, eight strawberries. Super scientific, as I said. Pour in about eyeball, one tablespoon of honey and one quarter teaspoon of calcium vitamin powder, Rapashi Calcium Plus. Next up, we're gonna add our water. Pour, I usually do about a quarter of, quarter of the cup of water. 
This one I think I put too much water in because the grapes are really watery fruit, so this one doesn't get as thick. But we'll mix this up. Let's see, that's actually not too bad. It's a little more watery than the last one, but it's not a big deal. Like I said, this is all just going eyeballing it. That one is our straw, no, our raspberry and grapes. And we'll make our last one up here. Again, one whole banana, blueberry and strawberries. So for this one, I will do, I just call it a handful of blueberries. I don't really count them. About yay or so many. This one I think is the one that gets the best feeding response from the geckos. They really, really like blueberries. I found that a lot of times I'll buy blueberries um, just for me to eat and my kids to eat. And if they start to go bad before I finish them, I will throw the blueberries that are just starting to get soft and mushy or maybe have a little bit of mold on them into the gecko food, even in with our Rapashi or Pangea gecko diet for the geckos to eat and they love it. Again, not very often at all. Be careful with how often you do that. You don't want to do it very often, but a handful of blueberries in with an entire batch of gecko diet is not going to hurt them. Just as you can see some of this fruit, this is why I love Whole Foods. I bought this fruit yesterday for this video and I've already got moldy strawberries and a couple moldy raspberries because Whole Foods is awesome. <laughs> But if the fruit's starting to mold, I just cut around the super moldy parts and throw it in there. Geckos live on rotten food in the wild. That's what they eat is rotten fruit that's fallen to the forest floor. It's not gonna hurt them, not a big deal. So this one, handful of blueberries, about six strawberries or so. And then the same deal, I always add a tablespoon-ish worth of honey. And of course include my vitamin powder, just so I know they're getting some good vitamins and minerals as well as a calcium boost out of it and put my top back on here oh wait water i almost forgot to add the water that wouldn't mix very well perfect all right Ooh, that looks good there we are, that is our last fruit treat. This one is a little bit watery as well, but again, not very scientific with these. So one thing I want to say that you can do with these that is a good idea, um, once in a while I will make a big batch of this, like enough to feed all of my breeder colony. If you're a breeder, I like to calcium load my breeders in the early spring when they're first starting breeding and right about now, November-ish in the fall when they're coming out of breeding. I give them a bigger dose of calcium and it helps them in the spring helps them build up calcium reserves because the laying season obviously with the females it takes a lot of calcium out of their bodies to lay eggs and at the end of the year they can be a little calcium depleted so I like to give them a calcium boost at the end of the year as well. One really good way to do that because if you mix a bunch of calcium powder into their gecko diet it'll change the flavor and they don't eat it all that well. So a good way to do it is mix up a fruit treat like this a big batch of it and really pour a lot of calcium in there really calcium load it and feed that once to your geckos. I usually do two feedings, one one week, one the next week, spring and fall to my breeder females to boost their calcium reserves. So this is a good way to get them to ingest a lot of calcium at the beginning and end of breeder season. That's one reason you can use this fruit treat. Now, we have our fruit treats all mixed up and ready. And you may be asking, well, I've got, what is this, uh, 12 ounces, 20 ounces, 16 ounces, it's a 20 ounce cup, almost full. Call it 16 ounces of food. What if you only have two or three geckos? You've just got a couple pets and you don't need this much fruit treat. What are you gonna do? Blend like a blueberry with a small bite of a banana and a half a strawberry? Cause that would just be a pain and it's not very economical, it's kind of dumb. So what you do is you get these tiny little ice cube trays. You can see the size of my finger here. These tiny, tiny ice cube trays. I get these off of Amazon. I think the three pack was $7.99. They're super cheap. They're really cool. And it makes using your fruit treats much easier because what you do is you take your fruit treat and then you just pour it over your ice cube tray. 
I'll use the back of my knife to kind of slide it around. It gets a bit messy, but that's okay. We like being messy. Fill up all of the ice cube tray holes with your fruit treat. Perfect. We'll do two of them here because that's what I have room for on my cutting board. You can see this is that thicker one, the first mango pear that we mixed up. Do, 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 do. Just smooth it around and try and fill all of those holes. And then the key is you go ahead and you pop this bad boy right in your freezer. Just drop these in your freezer and those little cubes of gecko treat will freeze just like anything else in the freezer. And then it makes it super easy to feed them. Cause what you do is when it's feeding time, you pull this out of the freezer and you say, oh, it's treat week. Like maybe the first Monday of every week is your treat day for your geckos. So you pull one of these out and you pop out two or three of these little cubes, just put them right in a normal food dish and they will thaw out right in your geckos tank and they'll thaw out, turn to liquid, your gecko can come over and eat it, and you can have a year's worth of fruit treat in your freezer, and it'll stay good for a year. Frozen fruit will stay good for eight, nine months at least. It makes it real easy to feed them every few weeks, just drop one or two of these blocks in there, or if you've got a gecko that's a picky eater, you can pop a couple of these blocks out, drop them in to your blender with your normal Pangea or Apache diet and add a little sweetness boost to your diet. If you have a picky eater or one you're trying to transition from eating an unhealthy diet, a lot of people will get a gecko from a big breeder or somebody that was feeding it baby food or fruit all the time and they have a hard time transitioning to a less flavorful Rapashi or Pangea diet. So that's a good way to transition them is mix up a batch of this pop a couple of these frozen treats into your blender, mix it up with it, and then over time you decrease how many of these you're putting in there to wean your gecko off the sweeter food. Got a picky eater or one you need to gain weight so you wanna get it to eat more food, pop a couple of these in with your Pangea diet, it works great, they're real versatile. You can use them for a lot and keeping them frozen like that really makes them last a long time and it makes it real easy to do. The way I would do that is you freeze this so it's solid and it's not so messy and then I put these little trays inside a Ziploc bag and keep it sealed in my freezer so they don't get freezer burn and they don't dry out. It makes them last a lot longer and you can keep these for months and months and months in the freezer and have a treat fruit that's good forever. It makes it super simple. Your geckos obviously are gonna like it because they're real sweet and high in sugar. It'll make you feel good because you're giving your geckos a treat. It's a lot of fun. And like I said, there's other uses too, like getting breeders or switching foods you know, transitioning them off of sweeter foods, getting breeders to eat a little more at certain times of the year. Lots of uses for this. It's super simple, super easy to do. Doesn't cost all that much. Just pick up a little bit of fruit at your grocery store and these trays are like seven bucks on Amazon. Makes it really easy. That's it, man. That's it. That's all I got for you guys. How to make a treat food for your gecko. Blend up some fruit. Give it a try if you want to. This is my recipe. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm Brian, Altitude Exotics as always. Thank you for joining me today. Like, share, subscribe, Facebook, Instagram. I say it a million times. You guys know the deal. I appreciate it, and we'll see you soon.